Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to support this national re uh, report. And Madam Speaker, I'm a scientist. And, and like all scientific minds, we believe in gradual progression. The fact that we have missed on some areas but gained on others is in keeping with the spirit of progression and therefore I believe to an extent if we adopt this report we will move the frontier of democracy. Madam Speaker, when the NADCO process commenced, expectations of Kenyans were very high. Expectations of women were very high. And Madam Speaker, it is sobering to note that this report is going to be defined by only four things. It's going to be defined and be remembered for creating the office of the leader of the opposition, the office of the prime minister, fixing the problem of IEBC, and lastly but not least, it will be remembered for its failure. It failed. It failed because Kenyans paid by limb, by sweat, by blood, and by life, so that their promise that due to this particular dialogue, the cost of living would come down, they hoped that this would fix it. It has not. The issue of having approached Kenyans in rallies and mobilized them and urged them to believe that the cost of living would be fixed through dialogue was a big hoax. It is therefore sad that nowhere in this report have we fixed the cost of living. The second failure, Madam Speaker, is the two-thirds gender rule. It's a huge failure. I never knew that people were lying about two-thirds gender. I don't know what people fear about women. Madam Speaker, the cost of running the office of the leader of the opposition the cost of running the entire retinue around the office of the prime minister is far more than the cost of fixing the two-thirds gender rule in this house where we need only two women more and in the National Assembly. It was deceit that we have not fixed the problem of two-thirds gender. The fact that it was downgraded to be taken to a task was a confirmation that nobody wanted it. Outside this negotiated process, which is political, you can never fix the two-thirds gender rule. It's a shame, and I want to urge ourselves to reflect. I have heard you, Chair, when you're contributing, as Speaker, when you're contributing, you said they'd be given one week. They don't need a week. We just give them one hour to go and pray. After praying, they fix an addendum that the two-thirds gender rule has been agreed upon. End of story. If you don't like two-thirds gender rule, why are you using the current constitution, which provides for the same? This is my problem, and we will move our country whether some people like it or not. I remember when I was a little boy at the University of Nairobi, we used to go to the great court and we would stand on a table and we would talk to nobody, talking just to the air, that we would change this country and bring in multi-party democracy. We did. I therefore want to speak here and say, whether some people in this country like it or not, two-thirds gender rule, one day, will be affected in this country. It's a shame that we wasted hundreds of millions on a report that is disappointing. Thank you.
Madam Speaker. Senator Ojenda. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Allow me to contribute to today's debate. And, Madam Speaker, uh, first of all, let me start by uh, thanking the committee. Yeah, Senator Tobiko. Uh, let me take this opportunity, Madam Speaker. What's the point of order? Honorable member speaking, but it's about the AC uh, levels in this house. I've had to walk out twice because I, uh, it's just a little too cold. Okay. Uh, to make Thames, it possible please. for all of us to be in the house, can it be reduced? Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Ojenda. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to the NADCO report. And Madam Speaker, let me start by procedurally thanking the team that sat together to deliberate over the many issues that bedevil this country and that finally led to the NADCO report. Uh, but Madam Speaker, I have a number of issues that I will raise in this report because Madam Speaker, I do not want this report to meet the same fate as the BBI report. I say so, Madam Speaker, because there are several constitutional hurdles which, if not dealt with early enough, even before the bills are done, then this report may meet the same fate as the BBI report. Madam Speaker, the question of the cost of living that was at the core of this report was not agreed upon. And I think it is of note that when there were the several demonstrations organized countrywide by one faction of, of the opposition then, the main uh, uh, clamor then was for the reduction of the cost of li living, and that is therefore um, one, one sticky issue. But let me also say this, Madam Speaker, that the cost of living, I believe, is work in progress, and I'm sure both sides of of, of government, the opposition and government, will work towards realizing an affordable cost of living for uh, the residents of this, of, this, of this country. Senator, uh, 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 a point of information, is it? When I think I'm well Mokin. informed, but I, I Do don't you know if my friend wants to inform me. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll not refuse the, if I, I am to inform you. So, uh, Madam Speaker, I've listened to two contributions, one from uh, our whip, Senator Kalwale. Senator Mogeni, you are informing Senator yes. Ojenda, And please. now from Senator Ojenda. It's not an opportunity for you to respond to yes, them. It is to inform. Which, which under, under Standing Order 105, we should not make statements that may be misleading to the public. Madam Speaker, you have heard it being said repeatedly by my good friend, Senior Counsel that this report does not address the issue of cost of living. Yet, Madam Speaker, if you go to page 144, uh, in fact, from uh, page 133, from page 133 all the way to 144, the report has comprehensively addressed issues dealing with the uh, cost of living. And we have even given a basis on uh, what has led to the high cost of living. We have made a proposal, if you see in the report at page uh, uh, 144, that the CS Treasury should uh, enhance the cash transfer to older persons, people with disabilities. We have made proposal that from February of this year, the Treasury should sit to, rev to review the tax policy with a view of reducing the tax burden on Kenya, which we diagnosed as the main cause of the high rise on cost of living. We have even made proposals on how farmers should be supported. We have even made proposal, Madam Speaker, that there should be a food program to schools 
so that we address the issue of cost of living on Kenyans. So the, is the, the senator for Kisumu, my good friend, in order to mislead the public that this committee has not addressed the issue of cost of living, whereas, Madam Speaker, as I've pointed out, that issue has been addressed comprehensively by this committee. And people in Yamira are waiting for the money for the old people to be enhanced to 10,000 shillings, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator Ojenda, please take note of those comments. Yes, ma 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 Madam Speaker, I thank the Senator for, for, um, for Yamira for informing me but my contribution, Madam Speaker, was that that issue, the measures that are required to reduce fuel tax and other taxes were not agreed upon. And when Senator Sifuna contributed uh, on this report, Senator Sifuna pointed that the cost of living and other issues of unga and carrying sufferers was not about those who were demonstrating. It was not about the leaders because they can afford unga. So the person who expected a reduction was the common person and not the senators, including Senator Mogheni here, who are in the streets demonstrating and running around with sufriers on their heads. And Senator Mwok here, Eddie, who was also out there running around. But Madam Speaker, I will, I will leave that point. That I believe, I hope that next time, Madam Speaker, when leaders go out there demonstrating, let them have solutions for the people they represent. Let them not mislead people that within, in a jiffy, life will change. We must work hard to improve the status of the people we represent, Madam Speaker, and that is why it is important at times to honestly discuss and engage. Both sides of the House, Madam Speaker, have that obligation. Madam Speaker, when the mandamano took place, I said I would not take part in the mandamano because I felt, Madam Speaker, that the solution to the problems that bedevil this country lie in a discussion, not in the streets. Madam Speaker, let me go to the second point, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the, this, the NADCO report, uh, in pointing to the need to audit the 2022 electoral results, Madam Speaker, takes us back to the old history and the question, Madam Speaker, that this country uh, would want to forget. This country would want to move forward. In 2010, we adopted a new constitution, and I think it serves the people of this country better to progressively deal with the issues that we have and not to every every electoral cycle, Madam Speaker, go back and fault results of those elections. I do, not, I do not think that the audit of those election results will serve this country uh, beyond what we have, we have, what has been done. I think Senator Eddie Mook um, has done an audit of these elections. Madam Speaker, on the reconstitution and restructuring YBC, the recommendations that require that we appoint nine members to the, um, Senator Mook, just wait, nine members to the Senator, panel. What's your point of order, Senator Eddie? Nine members, uh, Senator uh, Mook, you're interfering with no, no, my... No, Senator Ojenda. My let, line let, of Let's thought. listen to the point of order, please. Ma Madam Speaker, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm saying one, 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 oh, one, oh, one, four. Uh, you know, and, and uh, the idea that the Senator for Kisumu is seeking to you know, somehow impute a very improper motive on me. You know, when you say on national TV, I think that Senator Eddy has done the audit of the elections and uh, knowing very well that I'm not IBC, I've never worked for IBC, and uh, it's a senior counsel. Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, I have to pronounce myself on this matter because he has thrown a number of jobs, jobs on me a number of times, but I'm just keeping quiet. Um, you know, he's a senior counsel who by law knows the, all the institutions that can be able to actually deal with an issue of election. So is he in order to put my name on something like this or is he actually with, uh, Senator Agenda, uh, uh, let, like, let me just 